Yeah. And like the good old fashioned presentations of the past, the plan around the connections. So come on up on stage, guys, and we're going to share microphones. Actually, I had that idea in 2005, but I was really ramping up to try to get it open. And at this time, it's hard to imagine nowadays, but there were no maker spaces yet. So I couldn't just look at a model for another maker space and figure it all out. We had to like, do it all dry. So I had, and when the slideshow starts, maybe you'll see it come up. We had out here on the paper, on the grass, we had a, a paper sign and a card table. We were just telling people about this idea that we wanted to do, just to see if people wanted this space. And uh, we got an outstanding, just insane response from everybody. So that gave us the, the courage and, and uh, kind of the plan to go forward. And we opened uh, that October, we opened. And I, I can wear my uh, coat shirt from that, uh, from that year. Uh, I'm Fritz, and uh, along with Stephen, um, one of the co-founders of EPBird, um, one of the co-commentos guys. Um, sadly, our first maker fair was 2007. We missed the first one, but we haven't missed any since then. Uh, so I think our first our first show was like in this little corner on the grass. Um, it, it was uh, just like, hey, let's let's do the show. Um, and uh, it's just grown from there. We, we wouldn't miss it for the world. I'm Jerry Ellsworth, and I can't really remember if I made it to the first one or not, to tell you the truth. Um, uh, Make Magazine reached out to me when they first started their magazine. I had designed a toy, and they wanted to do uh, an interview on how to hack this toy that we designed. And uh, you know, I kind of blew them off, like, what's this strange <laughs> Make Magazine thing? And they did the article anyway, someone put it in the magazine. And then shortly after that, I have all this um, people contacting me from it, saying like, come to Maker Fair and show them how to hack it. So um, it was even the first or second year I came here and I was just like, hooked. I had kind of funny feelings about it though, because it was such an eclectic mix of, of like people making birdhouses and then just little nuggets of super high tech things. So. I'm Steven, um, I'm the other half of the group, and I think Chris covered most of our stories. Um, so I want to ask about some of your 
with your stories and um, experiences that you guys have had in Maker Fair. And uh, Sylvia, I want to start with you. You have really grown up with Maker Fair, um, and you you started that the first Maker Fair that you actually well did something that was maker related with the second. Your second Maker Fair, you were filming at Maker Fair for your show, right? So, and then you went on to where you were showing your um, own projects eventually at Maker Fair. So you have a lot of experience. Do you have any advice for first-time Maker Fair attendees um, or people who want to present at Maker Fair? Because you've done the whole gamut. Yeah. So when you first come in Maker Fair, it's going to be kind of insane, especially with these ones now because it's gotten so huge. Um, I was really surprised how big it's gotten. You like when I really first came here, you could see this giant tent in the back of the parking lot. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know it was this big, so we have to be ready for all like, all the crowds and all the um, like, the <laughs> stuff. Um, you also have to keep your like you have to be really open minded because there's a lot of things that you're gonna be kind of if you start doing them, you're gonna get frustrated with them and then there's gonna be a lot of things that seem kind of scary at first, but you really just have to respect that. Um, you just have to have a really open mind and like, taking a lot of the really cool information. Um, presenters, uh, you have to be ready for all those people. <laughs> There's a lot of people, especially if you um, get a lot interested in it because everybody's talking to you and kind of stressed out. Um, and again, with the minimus, um, take your criticism and be able to uh, improve your project. And, um, Great. Um, so, Fritz and Steven, you guys have um, done pretty much the same thing at every major fair, and you guys are known as the Diet Coke and Mentors guys. So, but I know you do a lot more than that. Is there something that you wish people knew you for or knew more about in your projects uh, other, other than the um, geysers of soda? I wish we were so far away. We, we have a, we did a mini maker fair. process, some of them were further along than others, and we, all the ones that were safe people come to the door for that, and we would love to do that here, just bring it just bringing it and stacking it, we can't both, our show takes so long to set up, do it and clean up, and we, we can't be these as much, but I really wish we could bring that, uh, play it every week on here. Yeah, we have, we have for, for our local maker, mini maker fairs, we can bring all of our, you know, sticking to waterfalls, and Pentel waves and all kinds of all kinds of fun stuff, but we we actually made a mistake uh, uh, a couple years into our, our maker fair experience of doing more than just our Coconuto show, of doing uh, some some uh, do it yourself geysers and uh, having a little video booth, which was so much fun, but it meant that we we were 24 hours a day working, you know, and we we. We never got to see anything, um, and so we cut back to make sure that you know, we're here at Maker Fair. We need to come away inspired. We need at least a couple of hours to to walk around and go, "Oh my God, that's so cool! This is a cool thing around my pillow when I go home." And so we, we we make sure that we don't do too much. That's one of the pieces of advice that I often give makers is that you have to take time for yourself at Maker Fair. That you need to. If you don't have someone at your booth to, you know, make friends with the neighboring booths, learn about their projects, and you can trade off and that kind of thing, and make sure that you um, uh, keep it at a small enough scale that you can handle it. Um, I've, I've done the uh, too many things at Maker Fair before as well. Um, Jerry, have you done that? <laughs> You've brought so many different projects at Maker Fair. I wanted to know if there were any, was there any one in particular that you thought was more rewarding or um, that you got really interesting responses from? So like, if you can tell a story about what your favorite things to share at Maker Fair. Well, going along the lines of like being completely wore out, it's pretty easy for me to say that two years ago when I brought the Cast AR augmented reality glasses, that was the most rewarding for me because Rick and I had been working on that for months believing that people would like it, but we didn't really know if people would like it. And so there was all this fear, like leading up to Maker Fair, 
and all this work, we had to build like five pairs of glasses and were they gonna break? And, I mean, it was we probably gray hair and all sorts from that. And we showed up, we set up, and then the, the fire department came through and said we couldn't have our little corner set up like that. And, and it was like all this drama, we were gonna have to tear it down. We found a solution for that. And then the, the doors opened and a couple people tri trickled in, tried our experiences, ran out, grabbed their friends, brought more people, and then pretty soon a line started to form that was taking over an hour to get into the booth. And the fire marshal came back again, saying, like, you're blocking off all these roads, you've got to get these people under control. And yeah, that was, that's definitely one of my favorite moments. Do you like the fire marshal? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> the fire marshal came in and got a full demo, and then afterwards, like, this is really cool, and thanks for working with us. So I, I don't know how Maker Fair can afford the insurance around here, all the dangerous stuff. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, Jim, you were, you know, just at the very first Maker Fair, as you mentioned, starting to build the community for tech shop, and now there are how many tech shops? Uh, eight and five more in the pipe, and then near Pikeland. Um, and many of the projects that come to Maker Fair uh, have been built at Tech Shop. So I can't imagine how rewarding that must be for you. So do you have any favorite projects that you've seen that were made at Tech Shop that other people have? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the standard ones, like, I mean, standard for me, because I talked about it a long time, but like the Oru Kayak, you know, watching the, watching Anton in those days, you know, developing that idea and coming up with it, and then having such a success that they have. Um, it's funny because we, we, we walk around, my wife is over there, we walk around and we'll say, oh hey, that was done in the shop. Oh hey, that was done in the shop. <laughs> so, you know, so I have no idea how many actually were. But I'd, like, I'd love to put both signs, have our members put signs up on their tables to say, this is made in the shop. Um, oh, I have another question for Chris and Stephen. Um, you you have been at just about every Maker Fair, but you have also performed at other venues, um, uh, you know, big, uh, well-known uh, events and things. Um, is there something special or different about performing at Maker Fair for you? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I think for of all the places we've been, in, in Maker Fair is always our favorite place to be. I mean, it's it's where it's where. Uh, we, we say in the show, it's where we find our kindred spirits. Um, you know, it's it's one thing to perform for an audience you know, in New York or Las Vegas or whatever, where it's like, yeah, okay, people are really into it, but there's something about Maker Fair where people get it. I mean, they're, they're, it's, they're not just go, look, looking at it as like, oh, this is this is a spectacle to watch. It's like, no, they, they, they're trying it themselves. And that's a huge difference. And part of what we try to do in every show is explain how the science works and explain how to do it yourself. And everywhere else you're kind of evangelizing that. Here it's like people know exactly what you want to hear from everybody. So it's a great to be in, like amongst our family, really. Um, uh, I was a little bit worried when I set up this panel that I would just be getting all of my friends up on stage. So I was actually really grateful that I was able to, to get you guys up here because of I haven't. Uh, we're enemies, right? Uh, because uh, of all the people at Maker Fair, I'm surprised that we hadn't connected before. Um, so knowing that, um, I want to hear from from each of you, if possible. Are there any particular strong friendships that you've made that have developed into relationships that you know have changed the course of something for you? Sylvia, let's start with you. Yeah, actually, guys. <laughs> successful and I ran a Kickstarter with it. It was a like, huge experience. I learned a lot from it. So I made it And um, um, uh, I've made a lot of friends here. Uh, the meta pictures, those are really cool because like, I get to meet them again. If anybody doesn't know what Sylvia's meta pictures are, she's taken pictures with friends that she's met at Maker Fair and then taken that picture to Maker Fair and then we take another picture with that picture. How many are we at you and I? 
five or six, something yeah. like that. Yeah, I can't even see the last one. It's so it's, long it's long shrunk back. down yeah. in the picture yeah. so we far. It's, be, it's become something where it's like, I, we haven't seen Sylvia yet this year. We can, we can make sure we can get that picture taken. Yeah, she has a new and bigger lab coat every time that she wears it. It was about three years ago that you came to get the lab coat, right? Yeah. We had to get you a new lab coat. Yeah, we forgot our lab coat one time. We were just like, oh, oh, oh. This isn't right. We have to have the lab coat. We can't even have the lab coat. So we have to find Emergency one. lab coat. But yeah, finding these friendships and stuff, um, and like meeting new people again, it's always like you just get that warm feeling. Like yeah, these people I can go to and like uh, collaborate with and talk to about projects. It's really nice. How about you? Yeah, I think for me, you know, just seeing our members and seeing people I know, and, you know all awesome makers. Uh, the other thing that's happened for us is we've actually gotten a couple of deals for uh, new locations from meeting people, bringing them here to show them the culture. And, you know, Ford was one of the biggest, the first ones. By them coming here and seeing the Maker Fair experience and seeing the community here, that inspired them to help us open the tech shop in Detroit. And then there were Maker Fairs there for a while too, uh, full, full room. Yeah, and this is where we, uh, certainly I found a, a community of, of people who, I mean, everyone from Calgary to Oslo uh, are, are makers I look forward to seeing every year, whether it's there or here. Uh, it's just been uh, amazing friendships have grown up around this. It's, it's been great meeting uh, so many like-minded folks, and it's spilled into my professional life as well. You know, a few years ago, years ago, I helped set up the Dow Hardware R&D department, which just reached out and we pulled in a ton of makers and stuck them right into this R&D department. And it had the same kind of maker fair feel. Like, we'd stay there late at night to make mean, cool projects. And, and of course, when it came maker fair time, we were just like, okay, we've got to get our maker fair projects. And it just all built off of that excitement. We, we, I actually, I grew up just up the road in, in, in the city in San Francisco, but we worked in a tiny town in, uh, called Buckfield in Maine, about 2,000 people. So we make a lot of friends here that we go to, but not in the country. We were based in San Francisco, I'm sure we had a lot of other relationships. But what happens is every major group we go to, just walking down, I'm sure this is your version does this, you walk down an aisle like way through, we leave your set up and say, oh, an old friend here, oh, an old friend there. So, Thanks for us because we do a lot of maker fairs in different parts of the, of the world. Actually, the folks from Calgary we ran into the other day, we like seeing old friends, and we're still hunting down my friend Roger from Oslo, who we hear is here. Roger, Roger, we haven't seen him. Roger, answers to him. So. Um, I would like to hear uh, some of your favorite maker fair moments from makers, maker fairs past. So, uh, yeah, from definitely from each of you. Sylvia, do you have a favorite maker fair moment? Yeah. So, um, one I can distinctly remember from when I was really little, like five years old, was the electric drum. I don't know why. That was just the one thing that I remembered really well. I think I spent like most of my time by when I was little. But that's just what I remember, and it's so, that's so like you can't have maker fair without it. You know, that's that one thing that you remember. Oh, electric drum. That's one of the things. Um, I think the other thing was maybe like all the like the fire products, all the fire things. Those are some things I just can distinctly remember that really cool. Um, at the at the very very first maker fair, this is actually not at the fair, but at the setup for the fair. Um, you know, I had talked to Dale, told him this crazy idea that I had, and so he gave me a free table. But it was way back in the back corner of this far building down here that's part of the jockey club now, but it was way in the corner. So on setup day, I pull up in my army truck, you maybe saw that army truck, I pulled in with my tables and the sign, the paper sign and all the stuff. And Dale was standing across the, the grass here and he, he came running over and said, is this your truck? I'm driving it, so it's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, he said, oh, can we, can we put it on display? Because the first maker fair, if you guys remember, 
There was nothing. Did you see all that lawn? There was all the space. It was pictures. sparse. It was like he was. They were scrambling to get stuff on display so people would have something to look at. So I said, Yeah, you can, we can park my truck over here, but I'm way back in the hall, so I, I really need to keep an eye on it. He said, Well, why don't we move your table out here onto the grass? Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I really do owe me a huge, you know, uh, debt for getting, getting us a uh, bootstrap and kind of started up because of the exposure that we got. If we'd been back in the corner of the hall, I don't I think we would have gotten that. So that, that's my, like, you know, and, and Dale was thrilled to have it. We get another thing for people to look at and climb around on. And stuff. I like the historical connection of making too because. Um, Big trucks and, and the car culture around um, making is part of our cultural history. Um, so I think those kinds of big displays are great. Um, there are so many, so many things to pick from, <laughs> um, and it's you know, and we, we, uh, I, I flash back to like, seeing a, seeing it at the Calgary being made for seeing a, uh, an astronaut riding a dinosaur. It's like okay. <laughs> I've not seen that before. Um, and uh, for sort of a, a, a quintessential uh, maker moment, uh, one, one time in New York, uh, Stephen uh, got, got quite sick with the flu. Um, and, That's a quintessential maker moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. It was more than the flu, it <laughs> Yeah, but, um, uh, but it was suddenly, uh, we didn't have uh, all of our equipment. Uh, I was there improvising, and uh, so we didn't have any. That's true, but um, he was in the hospital uh, unexpectedly, and so um, we didn't have all of our plastic trays and the soap bottles in it. We had them; they were in my car, in my hotel. The car. He would be in the hospital. Yes, and so um, so it was like, well, okay, it's maker fair, cardboard and duct tape. And about a half an hour later, we had all of the trays made out of cardboard and duct tape ready to do the show. Um, but also for, for here at Bay Area, I would say, um, the, the time that we did uh, did the Coca Mentos video booth, um, where we had little kids in lab coats setting off their own geysers, was some of the most adorable things I've ever seen. <laughs> there was one kid in particular who was just like, he pulled the, he pulled the pin, dropped the Mentos into the bottle, bottle of Coke, ran for the horizon. Like, didn't, didn't even see it. It was just like, I'm out of here. And then he looks back and he's jumping up and he says, This is the coolest moment of my life. It was so much fun. I want to cheat and um, do one from this year and then one from the past as well. I was just stunned yesterday. So a, a young gentleman came up to me and he said, I'm a big fan of your work and you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I went to college, but because of all your, your projects, I'm studying engineering. Holy cow. How can... me up. Um, but I think um, my favorite moment probably was um, Jim's booth for a tech shop. There was a, a crew there teaching welding, and I'd be pretty experienced at welding. And so I stood in line for the 20 minutes to get in there, and I go, it's going to be fun to get in there. And the guy very nicely tells me how to set up the machine and everything. I've been listening to the crackle of the welder going on, like, set wrong, so set wrong. So I listen to it, I get the helmet on, and he's telling me the safety stuff, and reach over and change the wire feed. What's it doing? He's like, no, no, we don't need to adjust the wire feed. Trust me. perfect feed. And he starts yelling at me, we got a ringer here, folks, we got a ringer. And he's like, do you want to come teach? <laughs> That just kind of speaks to my mischievous side. I think one of my favorite moments was um, three, four years ago, there was a gigantic, fantastic sculpture right up there with giant stones hanging on it. If we were allowed, we could rotate it by pulling these ropes. And I think the, uh, whoever was in charge of safety said, for a while they were shutting down, and they let us open it up again with our really serious affairs and had some amazing sculpture. But we couldn't, you couldn't let people run it around in the circle, which was like half the, half the amazing thing. But while it was shut down, I think this is a connection. This, this was all during our, we're putting our shows and cleaning up and running around the fairgrounds. 
saw it, I went by enough that about 20 feet away, there was Dale wearing a Sanders board. It said, needed, like structural engineer on both sides of his face, on both of front and back. I think it's a structural engineer, but it was whatever they needed to get the okay from the safety guy to say, yes, we've okayed this with whatever authority. And sure enough, an hour later, the thing was working. It was just like the best way to go. I know there's someone here. How do we find it? Just wore a Sanders board. That was, that was an awesome one to be, yes, find me an engineer. Um, which, uh, and you mentioned with the duct tape and cardboard and find me an engineer, a lot of Maker fair for many of us has been experiences of, um, of fixing something or solving a problem at Maker fair, um, which I think is one of the most welcoming things about the event is that it's okay to be making your Maker fair project at Maker fair. So, uh, what I want to hear your moments, other than you know your hardware and duct tape <laughs> uh, moments of, of fixing something at Maker Fair. So we got one. I'm trying to think. All right, well we can we can skip to someone else. And Jim, did you have anything like that? Uh, it's yeah, it, you're right. It's it's okay to be working on your thing here, uh, whatever you're exhibiting. Not like uh, robots, right? Where that's what people do a lot. They show up with their robot that's not quite done, but they'll get it done in time to fight and then never quite done. Uh, here it's okay because people like watching them set up their stuff. Uh, I, you know, we, we are always constantly in flux when we do our our, uh, our displays. We went from the little paper sign the next the next year after that we had the building like this next door. We had the entire building. And we had brought all of our equipment from Tech Shop, which had now been open. Milling machines and lathes and welders and you know, plasma cutter and all this stuff. All set up and all working. We were giving you know, little mini lessons to people on them. And yeah, talk about you know, fighting with the fire marshal and the electrical guys. Hopefully they're not here because they're shocking me or something. Uh, you know, fighting with all these things and trying to get this to work. The whole maker fair is very seat of the pants and it needs to be. And uh, I think that's part of the time. I think that's what we're going to get. I have some distinct uh, memories of trying to uh, duct tape things together and keep them going during the, during the fair. Like when we brought the glasses, we, had, uh, we were trying to build all these glasses um, in remote uh, Woodenville, Washington. And uh, a storm blew through power went out. So my business partner went out and got a, a haunted generator that was soldering by uh, candlelight and running the soldering iron off of the generator. And then we got here, it was set up, like, oh my god, I just don't know if I can take this stress. And we set up and we're in the room with the Tesla coils. So every 30 minutes, the Tesla coils would go off and it would like crash on the computers and the glasses would go out. <laughs> It was a good asset test for the technology. And then, you know, going to Maker Faire, it's not only fixing stuff. You have to get like a mobile display, or sometimes your displays are painful. Like uh, when you're in the uh, base guitar out of a Commodore 64. So I skated all weekend with this bass guitar playing a little amplifier on my, my hip. And I kept falling down and tripping over things. And I had tons of batteries and stuff would fall out. Oh, I'm okay, folks, hold on. Oh, it's not playing, crap. And I like, pull a screwdriver out of it. Oh, the battery's bad now. Did you think it went so good? Um, there wasn't that much. Like, you have to remember. Um, everything went pretty well. There were those little bugs that make the world go by. You'd be like, oh, okay. Oh, um, this. You know, fix it. Just those little things that you need to fix. Um, I don't think there's that many issues, but I think, like, um, you said that. Like people seeing that it can kind of be like, okay, but like these people, they're messy. It's okay, I'm going to do it. Let's go. Like that process. I like that about Maker Faire that it, um, people get to see projects that are in all stages of um, readiness. <laughs> that sometimes they're they're broken and sometimes they're working fully and sometimes they're somewhere in between and that's and all of those are acceptable here. And you can see that things are hard, but they can be done. And that, I think, is always rewarding. Um, I want to know, so when we talked, Jim, about the um, projects that you've seen that were made at Tech Shop, uh, have any of you seen projects 
at Maker Faire that you can see that can you know, come from what you brought in the previous year, like, you know, that, that was probably inspired by you or a derivative of something that you did? I definitely see some of that. Um, little kids that have been watching my videos for a while, I've seen their sort of videos that they have little puppets or they have um, sort of lots of illustrations showing and explaining things. Um, you can just tell, like, there's that little thing uh, that they got it from my like, shows or some sort of thing. And sometimes I, I'm completely okay with that. That's really cool that they were inspired by some of the things that I've been doing. Actually, uh, quite a few years ago, I made a YouTube video. It was a really quick thing where I recorded audio onto an old floppy disk just to, to show you. You record audio, and I made this kind of cool audio artifact, like this echoey sound as the head stepped back and forth. And the circuit vendors and the music makers you know, were persistent and, and bugging me about, we need plans for this, we need plans, we've got to make this thing. And I'm like, I don't know, I just built the thing and I just made a YouTube video. And I show up here one year and there's a whole group of people with floppy disk drives playing music and they've like figured out how to do it and like bootstrap themselves knowing like nothing about electronics but they really wanted that sound. And we feel really good. How about you guys? I don't think I've seen anything here. We, we do the same thing every year. I don't think I, to my surprise, I'm not, not much. So we encourage people to try and take the idea and, and run with it. Not, not that much here. We, we a lot of time online. Obviously, a lot of, a lot of that we, we we did have a similar experience of, of, of having a, a kid come up to us and say, like, I'm I'm going off to school uh, on scholarship for engineering because I saw your video six years ago. It's like. Way too crazy. Those are those are such rewarding moments. Okay, I have a, I have a totally different topic. One of my favorite things about Maker Fair is shopping. This is a dirty <laughs> secret. I hate shopping, but I love shopping at Maker Fair. So I want to know: Do you guys go shopping at Maker Fair? And if you do, you know what kinds of things do you look for? Yes, I go shopping at Maker Fair. Do you have a thing? I bring a wardrobe, not just the makeup. Oh. I have it. 
It's in your emergency kit. It's in my toilet. <laughs> That's an important tool for makers, whether you're at Maker Fair or not. It's a, it's a tool that a lot of people don't think about that is really crucial to this community. That's interesting. I just wanted to say on the, the shopping thing that, that uh, seeing uh, uh, strawberries uh, come along, because we, we saw them first in Oslo, uh, and, and to see it, you know, it's this brand new thing where they just they have this idea, um, and then to see it on Kickstarter, and then to see it here, then to see it you know, in the maker shed, like to see the arc of a product like that, and to have several thousand of them back at the Uber laboratory, it's the, that's that that to me is the kind of thing that you, you discover at Maker Fair. It's so exciting. I think everyone needs to travel in the hot fluga. I've solved almost every problem I've ever had. <laughs> oh, one of the things that. Uh, I was curious about is whether there were things that, of, at previous maker fairs that were particularly inspirational for you. So, for for instance, a story from our maker fair experience um, is that the very first maker fair we saw about Sheila Grossman's work, and this is again part of the shopping thing. We bought one of her um, beautiful 3D printed um, sculptures, um, and, and so then for the next maker fair we get a 3D printer. Um, uh, because we had to be able to you know, have a visceral connection with that thing that we love. So, were there, are there any particular things that you've seen that make a that were inspiring, or possibly set you in a project direction? Yes. <laughs> um, just to just to tag on uh, Kristen Hordes, uh stuff in the in the uh, dark room. Uh, yeah, I. I, I that night, I just started scribbling designs for clocks and designs for fountains that were based on based on um, the inspiration from from seeing what she's she's made. Um, and so, hopefully, I've got pages and pages and pages in my notebook that hopefully will someday become something real. I'm trying to think of something, but actually, I feel like the entire experience of the world is like you know, it's so open and there's so many. All these people, they're like working on stuff. It fails in the minds, or they like they actually have something working, and it like it says, "I want to make something. I want to make a project." And you know, they can learn from and all that sort of stuff. And um, I can't really pinpoint on anything at the moment. It's just that whole experience. Is I think I agree with you. It's for me. It's more of a general recharging kind of uh, experience. I'll be, you know, my wife's gonna go crazy in the next couple of weeks because I'm gonna be, you know, starting off into new projects and things from things I've seen here and things that uh, ideas that I've got. I got an idea and wrote it down just before we came up on the stage. I'm, I'm meticulous about writing down ideas so I don't forget them. But uh, yeah, for me it's just, you know, getting overall inspired. And, and also, the other part is knowing that there's a lot of other people out there that having that support. You know, before Maker Fair was around, you didn't know that there, there was all these other people around that were interested in making things. You felt really isolated and alone and excited. And to see, you know, there's probably like 150,000 people here this weekend, uh, something like that, that's really inspiring. It took, a, took me a second to uh, think of the one that really uh, uh, inspired me, and it was, it was kind of, uh, it, it's been kind of big in my, um, my kind of amateur science life. Uh, one of the first maker fairs, there was a hall over here that was just full of just crap you could take apart. And there was a piece of an electron microscope in there. And I kept circling by it, like, oh my god, I want an electron microscope. And here's a piece of one. And so at the end of the maker fair, I went to the folks that were organizing them. And I'm like, can I have that you know, vacuum chamber? 
And so it's still darkening my garage today. I was thinking, I never, I never did anything with it. I had these dreams of doing metalite uh, sputtering and metalization with it, and maybe getting it working. But you know, eventually I got into doing semiconductors in my garage because of um, that like, desire. And I actually got an electron microscope that works, plasma etcher, and it, it kind of caused this huge like, you know, engineering art to happen. Um, so at this point, I think I'd like to open it up to questions from the audience. If you have questions for these amazing um, makers who uh, helped create what Maker Fair is today, um, I think the mics in the center. Are these, uh, if you have questions, you can come up to the mics. Exactly, more true now. I think exactly. it's given a level of respect. 
Um, so uh, I have an experience from this major fair that's along those lines that I was um, given a handmade um, journal that's cross stitched with um, uh, uh, Douglas Adams' um, little, I can't remember what it's called, a little green thing, uh, the Jackson's Guide to the Galaxy. And um, uh, the young girl who made it for me, her mom, said, hey, Where we live in Michigan, there aren't people like this. And when, when the kids come to make a fair, um, they get to see people like them and people with funny colored hair and, um, and experience that it's okay to be who they are and to like making things that they like making. Um, and I, I can't, I mean, I'm excited to see you know, what what happens with kids who like Sylvia who grow up on this. I mean, who uh, you know, in a few years we will have people who uh, who don't know a world without Maker Fair. Um, it will just be part of their DNA, uh, and they'll just go like, "Oh, sorry, lock for you? Yeah, I do that. I've done that since I was two. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little uh, shrine almost at home of stuff that um, someone's given me. Thank you. 
I think it was the, I don't remember, I think it was the first speaker fair. Uh, in the building across the grass over here, um, over on that, do you, I don't know if you can get in that building. Is that part of the maker shed now over there? Um, Directly across the On that far end, on that way there. Uh, if you go in there, they have this big activity, they have this big metal, they, they have a big school bus that was painted with, um, or you could paint circuit traces with uh, electronic, you know, conductive ink and then stick LEDs on it. And they were making these things called throwings that nobody nobody had ever heard of before. The GRL buses. Yeah, yeah. Slideshow occasionally here. What's a throwing? Well, it's just a, a coin battery with a magnet on each side and, or I guess, one magnet, and an LED with the, the steel base lit the beads just stuck on it. And I guess you could use tape and put a magnet on it. But what they were doing is they were making these throwies and we were all making them. I was having actually a good time. It was such a stupid little thing, but I was having fun. And we were throwing them up in the in the girders, the steel rafters inside the building over there. And if you go in there, there's still like thousands of throwing magnets up in there. So, but when the LEDs were on, it was like this constellation up there. It was really kind of cool. Yeah, I think the for me the first time the first time I saw strawberries, I was just like that was that was it for the next hour. I was just sucked into. Yesterday I spent about 10 minutes with a, a girl, she's about six years old, and she's doing zip tie art. And in great detail, she showed me exactly how to close zip ties and put them together with make little stars. We're, we're usually working on going to the shows, but I was in Kansas City, I was in an hour or so that I had, I was watching this woman do some bidding. For example, two but she wrote me in. She sat me down and talked to me. I had like six minutes. Like, well, I got six minutes. Sit down with each other. <laughs> I was knitting it off. I'm not a knitter yet, but. But you learned to make. You learned to knit at Maker Fair in six minutes. <laughs> it's like the quintessential Maker Fair moment. The diet coke and mentos. Do you have any more questions? Thank you so much.